Hello everybody, this is Brother Luke, Sin City Preacher. Welcome to this episode of Bible Talk with Brother Luke. Uh, today I'm going to continue in the study of the book of Acts, and I'm going to pick up where I left off last time in chapter 21, beginning with verse 15. So let's do a little Bible study now, and I'm a KJV firstist, so I will look at it first in the KJV. Sometimes I find it helpful to look at it in another translation, and the one I like is the Amplified, because the Amplified translation is, is kind of like a translation and a commentary all blended together. All right, so chapter 21, verse 15. By the way, the subtitle for this chapter in the Amplified is Paul at Jerusalem. So uh, last time, Paul uh, was warned not to go to Jerusalem uh, by a, a prophet, I warned him, and he said he has to go because the Holy Spirit is directing him, so he's going to go. And so now, verse 15, And after those days, we took up our carriages and went up to Jerusalem. There went with us also certain of the disciples of Caesarea, and brought with them one Manasseh of Cyprus, an old disciple with whom we should lodge. And when we were come to Jerusalem, the brethren received us gladly. And the day following, Paul went in with us unto James, and all the elders were present. And when he had saluted them, he declared particularly what things God had wrought among the Gentiles by his ministry. So, it's been a long time since Paul was in Jerusalem. Uh, uh, this is about, uh, again, to give you a timeline here, uh, the church began at Pentecost, uh, then about f three and a half years later uh, from Pentecost, Stephen was stoned, the first martyr, and uh, shortly after that, probably about uh, six years after Pentecost, maybe two or three years after Stephen was stoned, Paul so Saul of Tarsus is converted on the road to Damascus, becomes the Apostle Paul. Um, and then uh, about four years later, uh, ten years after Pentecost, Peter is called to preach to the Gentiles, and he preaches to uh, Cornelius and his family, and we have the first Gentile believers. Uh, and, and then now we have um, about 20 years after Pentecost, um, the Apostle Paul is in his missionary journey, and the last few chapters gave us an account of that missionary journey. And so this is probably 21, 22 years after Pentecost, and he, now he decides to, he needs to, he's compelled by the Holy Spirit to go to Jerusalem. Um, uh, so he gives the apostles at the Church of Jerusalem, which is led by James, we would believe is the brother of the Lord, uh, and he is the leader of the church in Jerusalem, and so Paul presents uh, an account of his ministry works to the Gentiles, uh, to James and, and the Jerusalem church. Let me read those verses in the Amplified, see how it states it. After this, we got ready and started on our way up to Jerusalem. Some of the disciples from Caesarea also came with us, taking us to the house of Manasseh, a man from Cyprus, a disciple of long standing with whom we were to lodge. When we arrived in Jerusalem, the brothers and sisters welcomed us gladly. On the next day, Paul went with us to see James, and all the elders of the church were present. After greeting them, Paul began to give a detailed account of the things that God had done among the Gentiles through his ministry. All right, so that's... Uh, through verse 19. Let's go back to the KJV for verse 20. And when they had heard it, they glorified the Lord and said unto him, Thou seest, brother, how many thousands of Jews there are which believe, and they are all zealous of the law. See, this is not Paul talking here. This is either James or another leader of the Jerusalem church. And on one hand, it says they're all 
they, they heard it, they glorified the Lord. But then the first thing they said to him, look at all the Jews here that believe in Jerusalem. And of course, Jerusalem was the beginnings of the church and the, the first believers really for the first 10 years were all Jews. And as I've said many times before in this uh, study of the book of Acts, that there are two big mistakes in the beginning of the church uh, that had to be corrected uh, because uh, the, the Jewish believers were under the impression that Jesus came only for the Jews and not the Gentiles, not the whole world. So they, they had to come to understand that, no, Jesus is the Savior of the whole world, Jews and Gentiles alike. The, then the other thing is, what about Judaism? And uh, we've already seen some um, arguments in previous chapters over uh, circumcision, following the, the Jewish laws, uh, and uh, um, some people arguing that circumcision and following the Mosaic laws is required for salvation. And of course, Paul is adamantly standing against that and saying the law of Judaism is not required. It's not part of the, uh, the, uh, the method of salvation. The means of salvation is by faith alone in Christ alone. No uh, Judaism, no Mosaic law, no circumcision, no, nothing else is required apart from just faith in Jesus as your Savior. So uh, now we see here, he's back in Jerusalem, and the first thing that they bring up is, look at all these Jewish believers, and they are zealous for the law. Verse 21, and they are informed of thee, now he's, he's, he's saying, uh, we are, they are informed of thee, Paul, that thou teachest all the Jews, which are among the Gentiles, to forsake Moses, saying that they ought not to circumcise their children, neither to walk after the customs. So, the, the Jerusalem church, led by James, which, which is made up of uh, all these Jewish believers, they're continuing to practice Judaism, and they are telling Paul, we've heard that you're telling the Jewish believers, we already conceded to you years ago, last time you were here, that uh, the Gentiles, they just need to avoid fornication and strangled meat and uh, meat suffer, uh, sacrifice to idols. And, and if they did that, they'd be okay. They didn't have to follow all of, all of uh, the Mosaic laws. They didn't have to get circumcised because they're Gentiles. We'll allow that. But uh, now they're saying, but Paul, you're telling the Jewish believers that to uh, leave uh, Judaism, to not follow the laws of Moses. So they're confronting Paul about the reports they got from the message he's been teaching. And, and so I'll read that again. And they are informed of thee that thou teachest all the Jews which are among the Gentiles to forsake Moses, that's the 613 laws of, of, uh, of uh, Judaism, the Mosaic law, uh, also to forsake the uh, animal sacrifices, temple worship, circumcision, all the things that uh, the Jews were expected to follow in Judaism. He says, Paul, you're telling the Jews to forsake Moses, all these things, saying that they ought not to circumcise their children, neither to walk after the customs. These customs are all these uh, teachings and, and uh, uh, the religious uh, rules, regulations, and practices of Judaism. Verse 22, what is it therefore? The multitude must needs come together, for they will hear that thou art come. Uh, do therefore this that we say to thee, we have four men which have a vow on them them take and purify thyself with them and be at charges with them that they may shave their heads and all may know that those things whereof they were informed concerning thee are nothing but that thou thyself also walkest orderly and keepest the law so they're saying paul we've got these reports back you're teaching that the jewish believers abroad I don't, don't have to follow 
Jewish laws. In fact, you're going to be told them to leave them behind, to forsake them. And now, we want you to publicly uh, do this as a, as a um, uh, sign to everyone, as proof to everyone, that even you will still follow the laws of Moses. So let me read that in the Amplified, um, verse 20, starting with 22. What then should be done? They will certainly hear that you have arrived. Therefore, do just what we tell you. We have four men who have taken a vow. Uh, take these men and purify yourself along with them and pay their expenses for the temple offerings so that they may shave their heads. Then everyone will know that there is nothing to the things they have been told about you, but that you yourself also follow and keep the law. Paul doesn't follow and keep the law. And he, and he uh, teaches all believers abroad, Jews and Gentiles alike. They don't have to keep the law. In fact, they should forsake the law. They should leave it behind. Uh, Christianity and is not a sect of Judaism. It's not a, just an outgrowth of Judaism. It, it, it is something absolutely different and new. Uh, it was first, uh, the Savior came uh, through as a Jew, and uh, the first believers were Jews, but practicing the laws of Moses is not part of a formula to gain salvation through religious works. In other words, you don't get saved by uh, following the laws of Judaism plus believing in Jesus. He, he, was made it, he makes it very clear in all of his epistles, and, and here in Acts we're seeing this, this problem come to a head again, that uh, Paul is teaching that it's faith alone, no Judaism, and they're telling him, we want you to publicly uh, do this so that everybody will know that uh, the things that have been said about you are not true, that you, you, you are following Judaism. Now, verse 25, as touching the Gentiles which believe, we have written and concluded that they observe no such thing, save only that they keep themselves from things offered to idols and from blood and from strangled and from fornication. So they're, they're recapping what they agreed to years ago, years earlier, um, that uh, uh, the, the Gentiles didn't have to follow the laws of Moses, but they still expect all the Jewish believers to, to practice uh, the Mosaic laws, to all, all of the rules and regulations, practices, customs of Judaism. Um, but not the Gentiles. They didn't have to do it, they say. They conceded that point. Grudgingly, I will say, too. Verse 26. Then Paul took the men, and the next day, purifying himself with them, entered into the temple. Now the question is, why would Paul do this? Paul doesn't practice Judaism. He teaches against Judaism. The accusations they made against Paul here that he's teaching all the Jewish believers abroad to forsake uh, Moses and the customs, that's a true accusation. He's guilty of that. That's what he's doing. But instead of taking a stand against James and the Jerusalem elders, he doesn't say, seem to say anything about it right here. He doesn't stand up for himself and his gospel, his, his teaching, his, his, um, his message. He's not defending it. He's not standing firm for it. He goes and does what they, they're demanding of him. Why would he do that? It's a good question. I don't have a certain answer. Could it be that Paul says uh, he, he learned to be all things to all men? In other words, when you're with a a meat eater. Well, go ahead and eat meat. You know, uh, if you're if you're uh, with with somebody that uh, is um, uh, real religious, go ahead and and uh, go along with it because you want to get along with everybody. So the hope that in, in the hope that you can win them over to Christ. This is what he says in one of his epistles. Uh, could it be that he's just simply afraid to stand up to James at this point? He certainly stands up to him in the book of Galatians when he refers to the people as uh, he confronts Peter. When Peter, uh, he's no 
longer eating Jewish food. He's eating Gentile food. And then men from Jerusalem, called men from James, come and they join him. And immediately he leaves the, the Gentile um, table. And he won't, he's not eating Gentile food. He goes and eats kosher, uh, Jewish food, following all the Jewish uh, uh, dietary laws with the, the men from James. And uh, when Paul finds out, he, he rebukes Peter for it calls him a hypocrite because he knows he doesn't believe in these laws, he doesn't follow the laws himself, he doesn't teach anybody to follow the, the Mosaic laws, and yet when the man from James comes, he goes, goes and, and, does, and conforms. Uh, so uh, he confronts Paul, Peter in the book of Galatians. Why isn't he confronting and standing up to James right here? I don't have a good answer, but it's clear that he's guilty of the charges but instead of saying, yes, that's what I do, and this is why, and I'm not going to change or compromise, instead, he compromises. All right. Let's, uh... Verse 26. Then Paul took the men, and the next day, purifying himself with them, entered into the temple to signify the accomplishment of the days of purification until that an offering should be offered for every one of them. And when the seven days were almost ended, the Jews, which were of Asia, when they saw him in the temple, stirred up all the people and laid hands on him, crying out, Men of Israel, help! This is the man that teaches all men everywhere against the people and the law and this place and further brought Greeks also into the temple and hath polluted this holy place. So these are Jewish believers. Uh, and they are outraged to see Paul there because they know that he, he says, this is the man that teaches all men everywhere against the people and the law against the people against the Jewish people, against the law, the Mosaic law, and this place, the temple, temple worship, animal sacrifice, and further brought Greeks also into the temple. These people here certainly don't agree with Peter and Paul that Christianity is for Jews and Gentiles, and that, and that um, Judaism, including dietary laws, including circumcision, is in, including the 613 laws of, of, of Moses. Uh, these things uh, are told, are, they're telling people, no, if you're a Gentile, don't do it, and if you're a Jew, no longer do it. Quit doing that. Because if you are believing in Jesus for your salvation, but also believing that uh, practicing Judaism is part of your salvation uh, effort, that you, your, your being religious is required in order to gain salvation along with believing in Jesus. Paul says that you nullify the grace of God. It's another gospel, which is not another, which is a, a damnable heresy. So this is what Paul teaches, but he conforms for some reason. And now, there. not only did James, I think it doesn't say James, but in the earlier verses here, it, it said that um, he's with James and the elders, and he's told that, uh, go do these things to prove to everybody that you're not doing what we think you're doing, that we've been told you've been doing, teaching people to forsake Moses and the customs, and, and, that, you're, and that you too, you continue to practice the laws of Moses even today. So he does it. Now, while he's in the temple, more of these religious Jewish believers see Paul, they're outraged, and charge him again with the same thing. Teaching every, uh, all men everywhere against the people and the law and, this, and the temple, the place. Um, and you've let Greeks in here too, Gentiles. Uh, verse 29, For they had seen before with him in the city Trophimus, an Ephesian, whom they supposed that Paul had brought into the temple. Trophimus is the name of this Ephesian, who's a Gentile believer uh, with, with Paul, and they, they're, they've connected this man to Paul, and now they're angry that Paul has a Gentile uh, 
there in, in the temple with him. Verse 30, And all the city was moved, and the people ran together, and they took Paul and drew him out of the temple, and forthwith the doors were shut. And as they went about to kill him, tidings came unto the chief captain of the band that all Jerusalem was in an uproar, who immediately took soldiers and centurions and ran down unto them. And when they saw the chief captain and the soldiers, they left beating of Paul. So this is a huge, uh, like a, 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 a riots breaking out against this one man, against Paul. And word spread fast. The authorities, uh, the uh, soldiers and centurions, they come, and the chief captain, and now they see the people beating Paul, and they stop beating Paul. Let me read that in the Amplified, that portion. When the seven days required to complete the ritual were almost over, some Jews from the province of Asia Minor caught sight of him, that's Paul, in the temple, and began to stir up the crowd, and they seized him, shouting, Men of Israel, help us! This is the man who teaches all men everywhere against our people and the law and this place. And besides, he has brought Greeks into the temple and has defiled this holy place, for they had previously seen Trophimus the Ephesian in the city with Paul, and they assumed that he had brought the man into the temple beyond the court of the Gentiles. Then the whole city was provoked and confused, and the people rushed together. They seized Paul and dragged him out of the temple, and immediately the gates were closed. Now, while they were trying to kill him, word came to the commander of the Roman garrison that all Jerusalem was in a state of upheaval. So he immediately took soldiers and centurions and ran down among them. When the people saw the commander and the soldiers, they stopped beating Paul. Quite a scene. The only thing that I can say that is not stated explicitly here is that are the people who are outraged at Paul here, are they Jewish believers in Jesus? Like James and the elders of the Jerusalem church that were referenced just a few verses earlier. They've got the same argument against Paul. They've heard the same reports against Paul. Uh, and uh, but it doesn't specify that they are Jewish believers. I believe they are, but I can't say it with certainty. So now back to the KJV, verse 33. Then the chief captain came near and took him and commanded him to be bound with cha two chains and demanded who he was and what he had done. Well, remember the prophecy in the, uh, earlier in this, this chapter where the prophet warned Paul that he was going to be bound and taken prisoner? But now it's happened. And some cried one thing, some another among the multitude, when he could not know the certainty for the tumult, he commanded him to be carried into the castle. And when he came upon the stairs, so it was that he was born of the soldiers for the violence of the people. So he's lifted up. The soldiers lift him up and carry him away because the people were coming out and they wanted to kill him. For the multitude of people followed after crying, Away with him! And as Paul was to be led into the castle, he said unto the chief captain, May I speak unto thee? Who said, Canst thou speak Greek? So he's speaking Greek to him. And he, the captain, was probably surprised he could speak Greek. And Paul is highly educated. Uh, verse 38. Art not thou that Egyptian, which before these days made us an uproar and led us out into the wilderness four thousand men that were murderers? So he's, he's um, this is not a description of Paul. This captain is under an impression that he's somebody else that's a, you know, you know, a 
maybe he would define as a, some sort of a troublemaker. That, and what he, this Egyptian did was he caused a big uproar, he led people out into the wilderness, 4,000 men, and, and they were murderers. So he's confusing Paul with this Egyptian. Verse 39, but Paul said, I am a man which am a Jew of Tarsus, a city in Cilicia, a citizen of no mean city, and I beseech thee, suffer me to speak unto the people. So, Paul wants to speak to the crowd. Verse 40, And when he had given him license, Paul stood on the stairs and beckoned with the hand unto the people. And when they there was made a great silence, he spake unto them in the Hebrew tongue, saying, Ha <laughs> ha, it's a cliffhanger. This, that's the end of verse 40, and that's the end of this chapter. So I guess that's a good way of having a cliffhanger. Let me read these final verses here in the Amplified. Uh, um, then the commander came up and arrested Paul and ordered that he be bound with chain, with two chains. Then he asked who he was and what he had done. But some in the crowd were shouting one thing and others something else. And since he could not determine the facts because of the uproar, he ordered that Paul be taken to the barracks in the tower of Antonia. When Paul got to the steps, he was carried by the soldiers because of the violence of the mob. For the majority of the people kept following them, shouting, away with him, kill him. Just as Paul was about to be taken into the barracks, he asked the commander, may I say something to you? And the man replied, do you know Greek? Then you are not, as I assumed, the Egyptian who some time ago stirred up a rebellion and led those 4,000 men of the assassins out into the wilderness. Paul said, I am a Jew from Tarsus in Cilicia, Mersin province, Turkey, a, a, a citizen of no insignificant city, and I beg you, allow me to speak to the people. When the commander had given him permission, Paul, standing on the steps, gestured with his hand to the people, and when there was a great hush, he spoke to them in the Hebrew dialect, the Jewish Ara Aramaic saying. All right, I'll end it there. Begin with chapter 22 uh, next time. Um, it's very exciting what's going on here. Uh, well, one thing I, I guess I should have told you at the very beginning of this study today is that um, this is chapter 21, so we've covered 20 chapters already. Uh, there's been, I don't know how many videos, 30, 40, 50 videos already in this study of uh, the book of Acts. And there's a lot more to come before we finish this book. But if you're just watching this video uh, independent of the others, I really urge you to go back and watch all the videos from the beginning Acts chapter 1, verse 1, and work your way through the whole thing. This is a very important book in the Bible. It is a book that shows us the first 30 years of church history. All right, thank you for watching. Bless you all in the name of our great Savior God, Jesus Christ.